session off. Let me try. Okay. Okay. Now it's showing me. Okay, good. So everyone can see my screen. I guess now it's a voice layer. I'm going to talk about that. Voice means it is open system. Sorry. Open system interconnect. And this has been developed by ISO, means International Standard Organization. Standard Organization. Earlier, there were so many people who are producing the network equipments. Like nowadays, we are having the so many vendors in the market. Cisco, Juniper, EMC, Dell, and a lot of Taiwanese companies, Chinese companies who are producing the lot of uh, you know network equipments as well. When the networking has been started at that time, so many vendors has been coming up in the market and they were making their devices and uh, the devices are not talking to each other. Devices are using their own standards. Their own standards in the sense, they have their own protocols. Protocols, they are having it. And, uh, you know, cable and the specifications and all. Get their own standards, they were using. So what does it make the dis, uh, disadvantage in the sense? If a person is making a kind of, you know, you would like to design a network in the sense. So always we'll be looking for a budgetary things like how much budget we require. According to the budget only, we just need to make our network to run on something like. So when you think about that and when you go for a only Cisco solution in the sense, it will be very hard. Cisco in the sense like so. So I'll make one small diagram, you'll understand. Paint a group of it. So for example, uh, this is a Cisco switch. This is a Cisco switch. And uh, I cannot buy only the Cisco everywhere. Means like Cisco NIX cards are not present. Cisco servers are not there. Like that they will be producing only the certain, certain modules on this. What do I do? I will be I will be purchasing something on uh, Nokia Pyro, Nokia firewall like that. I'll just do that. It's a Nokia firewall. Nokia checkpoint we normally say checkpoint firewall. And I can take a router like the Juniper router. It's a Juniper. It's another company you can say. So the Juniper router. Okay, and I have some other load balancers as well, like, so I'll take this symbol as a load balancer, just like that I'm taking. So this is an FI load balancer, I can say. It's another company, FI LB, right? Firewall, routers, LBs, you know, like and servers and nodes and other things will come up. So let me take another uh, one for nodes. You can say this is one of the laptop, a Dell laptop, you can say. It's a Dell lab. Dell laptop. So when they try to connect to the Cisco switch to some of the port number like this, to the ports or something, if a server is sending that some sign of a packet down something like that, so firewall will be, you know, like it will be checking the rules and it will forward it to the people. Load balancer will try to do the load balancing between the servers. Dell laptop will try to access that servers in the back end or something. So what is actually happening because of these are all uh, different company make. Cisco switch, Nokia firewall, Juniper router, F5 load balancer, Dell laptop. Everybody is, was uh, asked, everybody was making a kind of different protocols and uh, cable standards and other things. So what was the problem in the sense like people who are designing over their own network could not able to integrate it with multi-vendor, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> multi-vendor environment. It was not possible. Why we require to go for a multi-vendor environment means in the sense according to my budget, I can buy certain, uh, some of the devices which are cheaper for me so that I can go for it. So this was not happening in the earlier days of 80s and 90s and all. Then the standards has come up. What are the standards? We have the OSI standards, Open System Interconnect. 
open system interconnect in the sense it is going to be completely open everybody will be use, utilizing the similar protocols similar cabling standards similar specifications on that maybe they will be producing many other uh, brand name vendors like that they will be creating their own routers such as and other things but they have to follow uh, software based things protocol based things you know like it should be the common for all so this osc is going to be the framework i can say it's a framework uh, given by iso iso this framework is uh, saying that there are seven layers in the models seven layer model it's saying layer 7 is going to be the application and layer 6 will be the presentation layer 5 will be the session layer 4 will be transport and layer 3 will be network layer 2 is data link and layer 1 is a physical this numbering is very important people may be having a confusion about that which is the first layer which is the last layer which is the seventh one always you can take it as like a seven is an application seven up six is presentation five is sessions four is transport three is network two two is data link and one is physical okay so this is how the numbering has been done on this what is the uh, criteria for this to become an application it should be shared by all the people like that what all the things has been discussed in the presentation and each and every layer like that we will see it so application in the sense whatever the application we are using it in a network applications it's called http https dns ssh telnet right and uh, remote logins these are all network applications we talk about means this protocols are used by every other device currently so why we are using the http and https for to access the websites and all dns is used for domain name service like it will be changing the ip address to the you know uh, the it will be changing the names to the ip addresses and other things we require that because we are typing always at twitter.com we don't know what is the ip address behind that so like this telnet has been used for the remote logins to the other devices we seen it already remote logins by the uh, unix systems and all so this is going to be common for all the platforms all platforms will be using this platforms are using this protocols application level layer protocols like that so means from a dell pc i can do the http to the site which is running on some other server i can even send my packet to the cisco switch even from the dell pc it's possible it has been understood packet format has been understood so like this is like all the applications which are going to be the common between the back end so we don't need to worry about that integrating a multiple multi vendor device in our network to do this all so everybody is uh, i can even say, just say one example we can call from iphone to an android phone it is possible people are uh, you can receive the call and you can talk still right so because they are using the same protocol to talk sip sip something is it's happening on that like that we can have it on the network sites also every other application should be running on commonly we can run a same http and https on a windows laptop as well as we can run the http and https on the uh, linux laptops also possible so this is going to be some of the common standards which are been uh, you know which have been monitored which have been maintained on the back end side so end user will not face any issues in uh, connecting to the uh, different vendor devices in the network so the next one is a presentation how your data is getting presented is presented in the network that is nothing but the presentation layer here we will be talking about that uh, coding and the conversions and the encryption and the decryptions encryption and the decryption coding and conversion in the sense we normally use ascii code nowadays we are using any code any code in the sense any language page can be open in any language running pc english english running pc can open the chinese page it's possible 
without having any kind of you know scrambling or something it will be showing your page properly so that is nothing but a unique code ascii we are using it for our typing the keyboards and other things so these are very common in all the uh, platform linux platform unix platforms windows platforms uh, in all the routers whichever we are typing on this everything is understanding all this so back end when you see that core layer everything has been same so that is what the presentation layer is talking about this is the coding and conversion encryption decryption we see that uh, des triple des it's a tri triple des and uh, rsa and dsa and other things are there rsa and other things are there so these are all the things aes we can use that advanced encryption standards encryption decryption in the sense password encryption we do decryption we do entire data is getting decrypted on this so whenever we are logging into the uh, banking sites and all our data is completely secured we are doing the encryption of the password and we are sending it we can even make our entire channel to talk on encrypted mode itself people are nowadays they are, everyone is doing from the work from home so when they are connecting to their corporate network they will be connecting through the vpn connection so that is called as a virtual private network that has been completely an encrypted channel we use because the uh, the data which you which has been traveling over the internet should not be hacked by anyone else so there we will be using the encryption and the decryption algorithms will see that so that algorithms are presented in the presentation layer okay then we can use uh, another things also like compressions compression is the sense file compressions which we are doing the stacker and predictor it has been called so so many you know like examples we can talk stacker and predictor so this is about the presentation layer means if you are making an application which is going to make a presenting a data in the sense it has to follow the standards which has been specified by the os layer so it can be freely used by all the people whoever is you try to uh, you know like utilize your application or something like then the session layer the name itself is saying that it's making a session breaking a session resuming a session and terminating the session terminating sessions means whenever we are making a session to the telnet it is like a session whenever we are making an ssh connection to another unix server that is nothing but a uh, session actually now i am talking on this one over the zoom connection that is a sessions so these sessions are making a session breaking a session resuming a session terminating the sessions are controlled by this session layer and the os and the nos means the network operating systems will be doing this for us doing this for us every other operating system will be doing that linux operating system will do uh, cisco will be doing that cisco ios will be doing that and uh, linux will be doing that windows will be doing that so operating systems and network operating systems will be handling these sessions for an user means we can open 10 sessions of the 10 different router login from your one pc so all the data will be kept separate data will be kept separate separate between sessions that is also been done by them because one uh, screen data should not be mingled with another screen data like so it will be a confusion for you like if i am logging into the router one i should be able to get the data from the router one only at the same, same time i am logged into the router 2 and 3 and 4 and all so those data will not get mixed to the router one screen router one screen will be always showing only the router one data so that has been maintained by this session layer means our voice layer in the session layer i can say that transport layer is how the data is going to be sent over the network sent over the network in the sense it's like a courier services courier services means how they are uh, you know packaging your kind of uh, the the uh, whatever you are try to send it to your people or something like that. so the same way the data has been getting uh, you know like packaged properly and has been sent over the network courier services i can say for an example it is the tcp and the udp are the examples of these two protocols on the transport layer i can say transmission control protocol and user 
user data gram protocol like this in this one the transmission control protocol is called as reliable service means it will be having a windowing mechanism mechanism means it will be contracting uh, you know, say contracting and uh, expanding expanding the windows windows in the sense how they are going to send the packets like windowing windowing mechanisms how many packet can be sent on that means if just it will be checking the link conditions about that if the link can be sent with that like in this link one mb can be sent in one second means it will send it one mb cannot be sent in the same time in the sense it will be splitting the packet like a segments it will be splitting it 10 kb 10 kb like that or 50 kb 50 kb like that so that will be keeping that windows mechanism means whoever the sender is receiving sending the packet to the receiver Receiver will come to know that I couldn't be able to get all the packets in one shot. Please send it to me in a small, small segments or something like that, chunks like that. So it will be sending it accordingly to the line conditions and the receiver's receiving capability. So it is automatically managing all these things. That's why it is called as reliable. It doesn't allow to you know, break the connection or something. So when you try to download some file uh, around 600, 700 MB from the internet, Initially, your link is so good, so it can take per second the uh, one MB like that. So after time being going on, going on like that, after some time, you'll be seeing that the link condition is very bad. Your broadband connection is very bad. It cannot take one MB per minute or something. So it will reduce it 500 KB, 400 KB. Even it can come until the 10 KB also like that. So that is nothing but a reliable. It doesn't allow the connection to break, but it will try to keep the connection on by reducing the speed by reducing the uh, amount of data is getting downloaded. That is called as a windowing mechanism, we say. And contracting and enlarging, you can say enlarging, enlarging the windows, window size. Means oh, again, the connection has come up so nicely. Okay, sorry, there was an interruption. The connection come up so nicely in the sense it can even increase it back to that one MB per second. It can download it, possible. So this kind of uh, windowing mechanism, contracting, enlarging the, and it will be keeping that uh, you know like uh, the it will be keeping that how much data is been downloaded, how much is yet to be downloaded like that. So that's why it is called as a reliable protocol in while sending it. But use the datagram protocol is called as unreliable. Unreliable. It requires human intervention to, uh, you know, like start the start the communication again. So that's why it is called as an unreliable. It doesn't have any kind of. It doesn't have any windowing mechanism like that. It doesn't have anything like that. So where it has been used? It has been used in the ping and uh, trace route okay and the dns uh, reso name resolutions that will be used tcp is used in every other ftp you can say every other protocol will be using the ftp only. means uh, tcp only it's been used so wherever you require the reliable connection and you do not you do not want to break the connection that should be automatically mapped it should be automatically maintained in the sense we will be using the tcp for that application will decide that and wherever you don't require any uh, reliable connection or something, ping you can initiate again. Trace route you can do it again. DNS you can do it refreshing like that. So that time we can use the user data gram protocol. So there are two, two major differences on this. So and this will be having a control packets like the SIN, uh, SIN acknowledgement, and established packets. SIN, SIN acknowledgement. SIN means syncing, syncing with the user and the, sorry, sender and receiver like that. Acknowledgement will be coming back, then it will be going like an established connections. So then the real data transfer will start. So this is a controlling mechanism has been there, built in with the TCP. So that's why FTP will be always using the TCP connection for downloading or uploading. Then the network layer, very important layer. Here, uh, the protocols are IPv4, 
sorry, IPv4 and IPv6, all routing protocols we seen that all routing pro what all the routing protocols are there? Uh, RIP, IGRP, IGRP, then EIGRP, BGP, OSPF, ISIS. All the routing protocols will be coming up in this network layer. And the IP protocol is also coming up on this layer. IP, we know already that we are assigning all the IP addresses to the people, either it is a V4 or V6. And we will be doing a lot of routing. We have done the EIGRP routing already. So this, this particular network layer is handling all this network related activity related with the IP on this. And it will be doing the path determination also. We discussed that in the EHRP that how the path determination done by calculating the reported distance, feasible distance, successor and other things and all. Path determinations and other things. So it will be doing that. And the data has been called, called as datagrams or packets it is called. Here in this layer, uh, fourth layer, it is called as a segments. Data is called as a segments on this. So this is about the network layer. Network layer is very important. Without network layer, we will not be able to, you know, send any packets on this. Means routing cannot be happening. Routing, routers, and layer three switches, all are all in this layer. Are all in this layer. So three is very important. Means like this, uh, RIP, IGRP, BGP, OSPF, ISIS protocol can be implemented on any branded router. Any branded means Jinip, Cisco, uh, Cisco, Juniper, you know, like any other branded router, like whatever the routers we are having, that we can configure that with it. But only EHRP cannot be configured with any other boxes because EHRP is a Cisco specific on that. So that's why we are talking about all open standards only. When it is becoming an open standard in the sense, every other vendor can, you know, integrate it with their own software or hardware to sell it as a product to the people so that everyone can buy it and they can integrate it in their network. Ultimately, this OS layer is for end user connectivity should not be any problem at all. According to his own bus budgets, he should be able to make up his own network by buying the any equipment available in the market to, you know, construct his own network like that. Then the data link layer, we will see data link layer has been subdivided into Mac layer and LLC layer. LLC layer. Mac layer is called as media access control layer. LLC is a logical, logical link, logical link control layer. Like this, media access control layer in the sense it will be providing the MAC address for the people. We see in the MAC address. MAC address is a 48 bit MAC address. It's also called as a firmware address. Firmware address. It's been given that it's identifying the identify, identify the device locations exactly. Exactly and physical. So this is called as a physical address, you can say. And the IP addresses are called as like that logical address. It can be changed one by anyone. Logical address, IPv4 and other things. Okay. So, so this is about the Mac layer and the logical link control layer in the sense we will be having like uh, it's like error corrections. And uh, you know, like error corrections are done here. So not error correction, error detection. Sorry, I'm very sorry. Error detections are done here. Whenever there is a data has been passing on to the network, there will be a lot of errors will be coming up. It's a packet drop is happening. You know, like because of the land condition is very bad. So it's raining. There is a natural problems are coming up on that. Or maybe your cable is so bad, connector is so bad. So at that time, the spurry signals will be passing on through the network. So detecting these problems will be done by this logical link control layer. Uh, we can say CRC32 and FCS. FCS means it is frame check sequence. Frame check sequence. 
CRC means it is called a cyclic redundancy check. So these are all the two mechanisms. This is the example I am given that CRC means like. So these two things will be done by, uh, you know, like they will be helping us to find out the error detections on that. Then who will do the error correction? Error correction <coughs> done in the uh, fourth layer. Error corrections are done. can say error corrections means retransmissions will be done. If I say that some packets are lossing in the sense, retransmissions can be done. So retransmissions are done by the TCP like that when there is an error comes up in the network. So this is about the data layer and the physical layer, whatever the physical, we are going to see it. And let me say this, this is okay. In the data link layer, this is called as a frames. The data is called as frames. Frames, uh, it's called as a frames. In the physical layer, we will, whatever we see, it's all physical things are like physical. It's very simple. Physical means cable we are seeing that, connectors we are seeing that, connectors and uh, NICs, right? Cable connector, then the specifications. Specifications. <laughs> Specifications in the sense I am talking about uh, cable specification, wireless specification, wired specification, wired and wireless and electrical, electronic, 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 why making mistakes? Okay, electronic, this all specifications will come up here. Like when uh, the data has been coming up to this physical layer in the sense, it will become like bits and bytes, bits. It's like electrical signals only it will be like. So we have seen seven layers. Seventh is an application. Network application we are talking about. All HTTP and other things are. All platforms using these protocols. Presentation layer will be talking about how data is presented in the network means we'll be talking about the coding and conversion, encryption, decryption, compressions, and other things. Session layer is about making, breaking, resuming, the terminating the sessions. OS and NOS will be doing this. Network operating systems and operating system will be doing this. All data will be kept separate between the sessions also. It has been maintained like that. Transport layer is very important. How the data, how the data is going to be sent over the network. It's a courier services. And it will do the error corrections also. Two protocols will be making this transport layer example, like TCP and UDP. It has been implemented. This TCP and UDP are available in all the operating systems as well. Even Windows, Linux, Cisco, Juniper, anything you take, it'll work. So TCP is a reliable because windowing mechanism, contracting, enlarging the windows. FTP will be using that example. Syncing, syn acknowledgement, established packets will be sent to control the entire traffic. Use a datagram protocol that is an unreliable. It requires a human intervention to start the communications again. It doesn't have any window mechanism as such. Ping, trace route, DNS, these are all the examples of the user datagram protocol. In the transport layer, the data has been called as a segments. Then the network layer, we talk about layer three. We always say layer three device. Layer three means network device. Network devices or routers, a layer three switches, all these uh, whoever is working on IP related activity, they are layer three devices, you can say. Here IPv4, V6 and all routing protocols will be coming into this picture. All the protocols are mentioned here, RIP, IGR, PHR, POSP, BGP, ISX and all this. So here the uh, data is called as a datagrams or packets. Then the data link layer, second layer, MAC layer and LRC layer will be split into two layers like this. MAC is responsible for providing the MAC address to the all the stations, routers, switches, firewalls, load balances, everything. Without a MAC address, we cannot pinpoint the physical address of the physical place of the uh, person who is sitting there. Like logical link control layer will be doing the error detections and it will be reporting back to the layer four to do the retransmissions on that. Physical layer is nothing but a bit. Say, for example, I say six, seven, six, and five. Until this, the data is called as a data only. In the fourth layer, it is called as a segments. In the third layer, it is called as datagrams. Datagrams or packets. In layer two, it is called as 
uh, frames. Let's say frames. Layer one, it is called as a bits. Bits and electrical signals, you can say. Electrical signals. It will be passing over the cables and other things. So why these names are given for that? So easily we can understand how the data has been flowing through the voice layer. Whenever the data is coming to the fourth layer, the layer four will be adding some header information. It's called as a TCP header or UDP header, then the data. Then it comes to the third layer. It will be source IP and the destination IP is been assigned here in layer three. Then again, the TCP header will come. Then the data is coming. When it comes to the second layer, it will be adding the source MAC, destination MAC, then the source IP, destination IP, you can see that, TCP header, then the data is coming up. Then there will be the trailers. Trailers are nothing but like CRC and other things, CRC 32 one. Here in the layer one, it will be called as like 1111000, something other it will be called. So why we are adding this header and trailer information, adding the uh, header and, uh, sorry, trailer info to the packets. Why we are adding this? To uh, send the data to the exact location which we want. Other we are adding this. This process is called as encapsulation. It's called as encapsulation. Encapsulation. That's what we seen in the serial van encapsulation everywhere we seen that. Adding the header and trailer information to the uh, packets means the data is called as encapsulation. Without encapsulation, no packet is leaving the network. Whenever your NIC NIC is actually sending this packet with an encapsulation outside so that when it is getting processed with this, so people will understand that source IP, destination IP from where to where the people are talking. And source MAC and destination MAC will be identified. And uh, along with that source MAC, destination MAC, source IP, destination IP, TCP header, or UDP header, data has been sent in between with along with the uh, trailer information of the CRC or FCS example like that. So once it is sent the data, when the people who are receiving it, at the receiving end, there is a de-encapsulation process starts. Encapsulation process. Means it will be removing all the headers, removing all headers and the trailer, and trailer to uh, get the data get the data to be presented to the user on the receiving end on receiving end it is a de-encapsulation process starts so while we are sending the data we will be encapsulating and we'll be sending it with all the control informations from where i am sending where to i am sending what is the data is about that which mac address it has to be delivered which ip address it has to be delivered uh, what is the TCP header information? How much data I am sending to that? What is the sequence number and other things? All information I am sending into that. The exact receiver, when he is receiving the data, he will remove all the header information. He will be removing this all header informations as well as the trailer information. And the data will be presented in the screen like this. So these two process will be important for the network communication. Each and everything is being encapsulated and sent. Our Zoom meeting completely encapsulated and sent. You are receiving it, your PC is receiving it, and it is doing all the de-encapsulation, and you are listening to my voice, you are seeing my screen, and we are doing a lot of labs and practicals on the packages and everything. So without this encapsulation and decapsulation, nothing is going to work in our environment. If you are connected to the network, this process starts. Then only we'll be able to connect to the internet. We'll be talking to the, chatting with the peoples on the messenger. Uh, like we'll be connecting to the internet on this, so connect to the Facebook, Twitter and everywhere. So all these pinpoints which is happening because of that, the tracking has been properly done by the encapsulation process. While you are sending, 
encapsulation starts while you are receiving de encapsulation starts to get the data out of this so this is about voice layer okay that's all for voice layer